Hello, thanks for making some time today to join us in this demonstration. My name is Jonathan Kowal and I'm one of the storage specialists at AHIT. We'd like to walk you through our integration of Dell EMC's PowerMax into ServiceNow. Service management has become a critical component in IT operations and there are several reasons why this is. First, improving visibility. There are a lot of assets to manage in any cloud environment. We have to get the right information in front of the right people to make informed decisions quickly. This requires us to consolidate tools which will increase the effectiveness of our resources. This will also reduce the noise created by looking for information in too many places. Tool consolidation will lead to consistency. We want to take these steps to consolidate tools, providing information and actions in a consistent manner. Consistency will remove errors and provide a baseline of metrics to measure success. As we progress with consolidation and consistency, IT operations can reduce the mean time to resolution because we have correlated information from the right sources. Faster resolutions from a single system of action leads to increased productivity. Finally, with all of this automation, we can deliver self-service to our users. Self-service is not without gates as governance controls are put into place. So how did we get there with the PowerMax? First, we had to get the information from the storage array into the CMDB. By leveraging the native RESTful API from Unisphere for PowerMax, we can ingest all of the configuration data into our single system of record, ServiceNow. Once we have the data, then we can structure it and report on it. We're actively pulling data and publishing that in a simple to consume dashboard. The integration and dashboards are completely customizable to your needs, but a key point to understand is we are not rewriting the native UI and replacing the native functions there, but we wanna give more access to the relevant information through a single tool. Now that all the data is ingested and displayed, we can build a self-service portal. With this automation, you can enable specific workflows that users can order when needed that flow through an approval process. These workflows can be simple or complex, but the goal is to automate repeatable tasks and remove as much manual work as possible. Now that we've talked about why we created this and how we approached it, let's take a look at the integration. And here we are inside the ServiceNow portal, and we can take a look at the PowerMax dashboard that we have created. So we launch over here from our favorites into the dashboard. Uh, the first thing will be to select the instance. This dashboard can support multiple instances of PowerMax. Uh, we have one running in our Brentwood data center. Uh, immediately, we're, we get some system info, storage efficiency reporting as this system is enabled with data reduction. Uh, we do have a, a link here to launch into Unisphere, so uh, an administrator could launch directly in and with credentials could go do those native functions uh, that we mentioned earlier. Um, we get some details on the system capacity. We have subscribed capacity, which is the front end host capacity, usable capacity, which physically inside the system and how much that's being consumed. The way we've structured these bars here is actually as they fill up, as the percentages increase, once you hit 60 plus percent, it'll flip to yellow. 75% flip to red, those are completely customizable. The colors can be anything you want, the percentages can be anything you want. Um, we could even have it for different things, like if our data reduction ratio dropped below a certain level, we could change the color um, to give a quick indication to a user that there may be something going on inside the system and we need to go take a look at it. Um, we have more information here on the storage groups. Storage groups are a common item to manage storage within the PowerMax. This is a grouping of volumes that would be presented to an application uh, or a VMware environment with VMs running on it. Uh, so we've, we've shown that here. And then once you select a group, you get some more details on that storage group. Uh, we can see the system is consuming about 23 terabytes of capacity. Um, data reduction is enabled and we're getting the uh, data reduction ratio. Uh, storage admin will be very well aware of a masking view, so we can see that that masking view is here. And then as we come on down, we can show the requests that have been opened on this system and which ones are out there. Uh, we can see here that there's been a, you know, some volume provisioning requests on this system uh, over the last week and how many over the last month. We can drive that into comparison of other requests, open requests, approved requests, declined requests, uh, and, and show that quickly in very visibly to, to a user. Um, but one thing I, I do wanna show, uh, we're pulling about 20 different API commands out of the array to populate the CMDB, uh, and we can drill into that data and see what we're pulling into the system. 
And we're not just pulling individual items, but we're actually creating relationships between those items so that we can create some structure on top of that to A, display that back to the user, but also create those actions behind the scenes uh, to interact with the array uh, from our service catalog. Uh, so we can see here, if we look into one of the storage groups, this is our demo VMware environment, uh, which data we're pulling out, right? We've, we've displayed some of this data back in the storage groups. Uh, there's a little more data in here that may not be relevant and you can pick and choose what gets displayed, what doesn't get displayed. But down below, you can see some of the relationships that we've, we've structured uh, and the ability to act on some of those items. Um, also upon this data, you can correlate it into other things. So if we had been pulling in data from vCenter because this is a VMware environment, we could relate this VM is running on top of this ESX server. This ESX server relates to this worldwide name and it is attached to this volume. And if there's an alert that came in from a fiber channel switch uh, or there was a capacity alert on a volume, we would know all the way up to the application that relationship so as an alert was sent out to the team who all needs to be involved what needs to be engaged where does the problem actually happen so we're correlating that information for you inside the system so we can go act on it a lot faster with just the right resources not having to go bring everybody in figure out what it is very manually before someone can go troubleshoot the system's taking advantage of the data that it has and the correlation to get us into faster actions so now that we have that data, we have the relationships built. Um, we've built a, a service catalog. So driving into the catalog, we can see some of the items that we've built here. Um, so we can turn on SRDF for replication between arrays, uh, creating just array-based snapshots, creating application replication from an array snapshot. This would be an integration with the AppSync tool so that we can create application consistent either at a VM layer or a database layer or databases running on top of VMs. Uh, and provision those to lower environments for test dev or reporting. So we can drive all of those requests from here. I can do end-to-end -end volume management. So I can create a new volume and have it provisioned through VRO up into the VMware environment to create a VMFS data store. Uh, or I could just simply have new volumes created and hand it off to an application team so that they can go do what they need to do with it. Uh, and I will drive into that workflow here. So first we got to select that array. Uh, the storage group that we're going to put it in. So here I'll just add it to my Oracle Customer Relationship Management Prod Environment, ASM. We know typically with ASM they like to have four volumes or the, the DBA that would be making this request would know that he wants four volumes of equal size. Um, so they're all going to be 111 gigabytes. And then we're going to go ahead and order this request. So once that gets submitted, this will go into an approval process and wait for someone to make an approval. So we can see here that the PowerMax approver has been requested for approval and it's waiting to be fulfilled. So if I jump back into the system, I can jump in and impersonate as the approval so I can show you guys what that looks like. So just like before I had my favorites, I can see the favorites here with my approvals. I can see I have some requests out there uh, and the one that I just requested up here at the top I can drill in and see, hey, there's my four volumes of 111 gigabytes that's waiting to be approved. What do I need to do? I could reflect some chargeback or showback dollars of what that request is going to cost. And someone can make it a decision. Does it need to be approved? Um, this could be a multiple level approval. It could go to a cab for change control. Uh, it could also go to a schedule to say, okay, once I approve it, run this tonight at midnight during a change window. Uh, or the way we have it set up right now is once it once we hit approval, it goes actually out and executes it immediately. Um, so as we've driven through this portal um, and the catalog that we've created and, and everything that um, we've done on top of the data that we've ingested, you can see I can create a very powerful automation and self-service platform uh, with ServiceNow and the data that I'm getting from PowerMax leveraging um, native APIs uh, into the system to do very simple actions, get a little bit of data, or I can make those very complex actions um, and get common tasks out of an admin's hands and create those in an automated fashion, uh, delivering those to an end user very quickly and consistently all the time. Uh, so thank you for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us at Ahead. 
uh, we can either get you to the right person or they can route you to me and we can we can have a deeper conversation about this. Thank you.